Okay guys, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 121 Digital 1 and today we're going to discuss the logic functions which is immediately following basic uh, excuse me, introduction to logic operations. Okay, like we said in our previous lecture, uh, basically uh, three basic gates which if we remember right were the not, the and, or can be combined uh, to form more complex logic circuits. Just like uh, brick, wood, and metal are not very impressive by themselves, but combined together they can create a house. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build some houses. Okay, using these three basic gates, we can uh, basically do some of the more common, most common logic functions. We're going to list these right here. Okay, the first of the basic logic functions is a comparator. And all that is is just compares two numbers, whichever one's bigger. We're going to these a little bit more detail later. Arithmetic operations. And these A, B, C, D. So you're familiar with addition, subtraction. multiplication, division, there's a bunch more, we're just going to go over these ones. Three is basically code conversion, and a subset of that one is A and B is an encoder, and decoder. Four, data selection. So there's a subset of these here is a multiplexer. We're going to this. And D multiplexer. Five is basically data storage. And this is accomplished with flip flops. C semiconductor memory. D magnetic optics. And the final one is counters. Counters. Okay, so let's go over these each one in uh, detail. So like I said, uh, comparators, basically a comparator, all it is, uh, compares, uh, compares magnitude to quantities. Okay, um, so A and B. What is the three possible combinations outputs here? So basically, A could be bigger than B, B could be bigger than A, or A could be equal to B. So you would expect three outputs there. So A greater than B, A equals B, A less than B. So these are basically, um, you know, just uh, example 10 and 5 going into it. So 10 is bigger than 5. Here's our three outputs. And A greater than B equals B, A less than B, so you would expect a high, low, low here, or one, zero, zero. Makes sense, right? That's going to arithmetic operations. More on these things later. Okay, arithmetic operations. Like I said, um, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, and division. Uh, plus, minus, Multiply, divide. Um, they're actually all done with adders. So this is really kind of, even though there's four functions, four operations, four basic ones, 
these guys right here, and all the new batters. Uh, we'll go over into some of these a little bit later. Okay, first one obviously is our adder. Basically, all an adder is is the number that's coming in. Two numbers to be added, A and B, coming in on the left, and there's this thing here called a carry in. Carry in. We'll go over this a little bit later. Carry in. Those are coming into the adder. And what you get out is two outputs. Sum, C out, carry out. Okay? So, um, an example, eight, seven, and say so carry in zero, we'll go over this later. So obviously, the sum is going to be 15, you know, from a regular math there. So our sum and combination of the carry out should be equal to 15. So our carry out is 1, and our sum is 5. Those guys put together, those are, can be reassembled as 15. We'll again go into this later. Okay, so that's an adder, um, subtractor. Uses adders. Special special uh, combo. Um, again, three inputs, A, B, borrow, in, and difference, and borrow out. One more second. Okay, C. Um, yeah, I, I totally understand. Not so easy to understand the fact that a subtractor uses adders. It's just a special case of uh, addition. Multiplication, though. That. Multiply. I'll just say multiplication. Multiply. Um, all multiplication really is is successive additions with shifts. Okay, so it's making use of adders and then shift registers, which we'll talk about later. So, this is adders. D divider again uses adders and shifts because dividing is a special case of multiplication. 